To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com. What are these meters that we're looking at? What are they called? Is it one meter or is it two meters inside of one meter? It's peak and RMS meters. Peak meters, uh, when we talk about meters, we talk about ballistics of meters. And ballistics of meters means the attack and usually the release and also uh, all kinds of, but it's usually the attack of the meter and also the release. So if we, if we look at a peak meter, a peak meter has a very fast attack and a very fast release. What is a peak meter used for? What do, does a peak meter give us a sense of power? Can we look at the peak meter and see if something's powerful? No. It, it's going to show us transient peaks. And it, the only thing that it's really useful for is showing that you don't have digital overs, like Mitch just said. The, the darker bar on, on both these meters is the RMS. So the RMS has different ballistics, and it's supposed to sort of ignore the transients. So it's not, it's, it's, it's ignoring the peaks and it uh, has a slower attack, a slower release, and, uh, and it's complementary to the digital peak meter, although it's sort of ignoring the peaks on purpose. What, is it, what does an RMS meter show us? Compressed bass. You guys are too smart. You watch the videos. It shows us compressed bass. It shows us average volume. Exactly. So, so because it's, it's showing us, um, uh, it's ignoring the peaks and it's showing us compressed space or average volume, uh, it can be helpful to show us the meat or the weight of the track. And if we watch it here in this sort of intro build from Dead Mouse, there are no drums, but there's good RMS power and that's coming from the compressed bass. And then it all evolved. And we got LUFS and loudness units. What's the difference between a loudness unit and a dB or a, a loudness meter and an RMS meter? What's the difference? Perceived versus pressure. Say more, Sean. Weighted, that's the word. Matthias has it again. It's weighted. Say more. What does it mean that the loudness LUs are weighted and dBs are voltage? What's the difference? What is what is it weighted for? The human ear. Exactly. Okay. So for those who know, you know. For those who don't know, the the human ear. We have the Fletcher Munson curve, right? We know this, and this curve is a nonlinear curve that shows where the human ear is sensitive and not sensitive. Uh, the, the human ear, if, when it goes low, it means that we need less of it to have it sound equal. When the curve goes up, it means we need more of it to have it sound equal. And then our, the human sensitivity of the ear is also relative to how loud you're listening, which means that the sensitivity, those little parts where we're very sensitive and not very sensitive, changes as we change the average listening volume. So, so the human ear, we need a lot of bass to have it sound equal, as we can see down here, especially when we're listening quietly. And then sometimes, and somehow we have this funny little uh, insensitivity around 10K, but in the mid range, we're quite sensitive. So, what does that mean for us? Well, it means that um, if the, the song is changing in volume, if it's changing in the mid range, it should, we, the, the scale of the metering should make us aware that it really did get louder because even though the voltage change in the mid-range was smaller, us as humans were going to perceive it as being much louder. So that's how it's weighted. It's not pure voltage. It's weighted voltage depending on where this voltage increase lies within the frequency spectrum okay so within within the lu world we have a bunch of different lu readings we have integrated we have short term we have momentary we have the loudness range in lu 
We have PLR, peak to loudness ratio, which we'll talk about. We have true peak and we have RMS. So now let's, let's, with, with all, let's, let's talk about what these, each one of these are or is. What, is. what is integrated loudness for a song? What is the integrated loudness for a song? Can you play a piece of the song and get the integrated loudness? Or do you have to listen to the whole song? See, yeah, Hakan's on it. It's the whole song. It's the whole song, and then to get a more accurate number, they take out the quietest parts, and they take out the loudest parts because they're sort of anomalies, and you get this average integrated loudness for the entire song, which gives you a, 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 a reading, and this is what Tidal uses. Spotify has a little bit of a different algorithm, but they might change it next week. Um, but this is what a lot of broadcasts uses, uh, to know whether to turn your movie or commercial or song up or down. When they look at a two and a half hour movie, they give that movie an integrated loudness reading. And then they, give, they put a static gain change on that entire movie. And maybe a limiter if there's an explosion or a gunshot that's too loud. There might be a limiter to catch the super loud stuff, but they're putting a static gain change on your movie or commercial or song, just like they do in Spotify, uh, so that you could watch it next to the commercials and anything else and not touch your volume knob. Does everyone understand that? So it's a static gain change. They're not compressing your movie. They may put a little limiter for the loudest parts, and same with your music. But for the most part, this loudness normalization that's happening in the world are static gain changes. They're not turning your movie up and down. Is everyone good with that? Or your song up and down? Because that would mess up your beautiful dynamics that you created. Okay, good. So integrated loudness, you have to play the entire song or two-hour movie or whatever down, and you get a reading. Now, in Cubase... Uh, we have this cool way of cheating because we're New Yorkers and we're always in a rush and we can, we can do it not in real time. I've made a key command shift option S it'll analyze the file, not in real time and give me everything I want. Right? So here it shows me my, my uh, max momentary loudness, a short term loudness, which doesn't mean much in that in this sense, but it gives me my integrated loudness minus 8.06. So if title's loudness target is minus 14 and this is minus eight, let's round it off. What is what is title going to do to this um, uh, dead mouse track? What is it going to do? It's minus eight. It's going to pull it down. How much? It's minus eight. The target is minus 14 integrated loudness. Yeah, down by six. Exactly. You guys, all right. So everyone's on this. So, so that's integrated loudness and it's very, very useful. Um, Short-term loudness, is, is, that a, is that an absolute number or a rolling number? Is it a number that's always re being reset? It's rolling. It's been reset over, I forget how many, how long it is. We, we could look it up, 400 milliseconds, something like this. And so it's always resetting its, what, it, what it is as a short-term loudness, short-term LU. So this is what we look at when we say, how loud is my verse? How loud is my chorus? How loud is my drop? It's not the integrated loudness. We're looking at the short-term loudness of that section. Is it a more intelligent way of, of, is it similar to RMS, but more accurate? Is that fair to say? Same idea? Yes. So let's go back to what, what is, do you see how the number's bouncing around and not sticking on a static number? You see how that, that short-term loudness, this thing here, sorry, I was trying to draw it for you, but you want to draw with this plugin. This number here, did, did, everyone saw it bouncing around. What was, so we can't say that his short-term loudness was minus 7.8. We don't speak of it that way. We say uh, uh, it's eights and nines or nines and tens or tens and elevens or fives and sixes. What was, 
what was the mastering engineer's short-term loudness target for the drop for dead mouse on this mastering? What was it sort of? Yeah, minus eight, minus eight. Can everyone see that? Watch this again. It's going to bounce around, but we're going to say it's sort of minus eight. We could call that sevens and eights or mostly eight. Yeah, exactly. Eight-ish. There you go. So this is a rolling number. This is very, very helpful. Okay. Moving down, here's momentary max. What is this? What? Okay. Yes, Matthias, it's the peak. What kind of peak is it? Is it the same as the peak meter we started with today? Or is it weighted peak? It's peak LU. So it's a weighted peak. It's not just the regular. Yeah, it's a weighted peak. What kind of things in a movie, what would, what would this momentary LU max, what, what, what would make it spike? An explosion, a gunshot, anything with lots of mids that was spiky is, would show up here as a momentary max. Good. Now the loudness range is going to show us the dynamic range of the whole song, right? If we have a jazz thing, quiet stuff, and goes into loud things, um, it's going to show us that the the dynamic range of the whole song, which is very important, and we'll talk about it in a second, uh, because it's going to lead to the PLR. What does PLR stand for? Anybody? I don't expect anyone to know. It's the peak to loudness ratio. And this is one of the key factors that factors into whether Spotify is going to turn your song up or down. What happens to a song where, let's say you, you make a special master for Spotify and it's, it's your short-term loudness is around minus 14. Your integrated loudness also ends up sort of around uh, minus 14, but you have one crazy loud moment where the trumpet just hits a note like, like Miles Davis in Sketches of Spain or, or, or John Coltrane or whatever, whatever classic jazz thing where all of a sudden one of the horns just blasts you out. What, what, how does Spotify deal with that? You, they got to turn it down right? They may stick a little bit of a limiter on it, but if they see your peak to uh, loudness ratio is, is very, very high, what they're going to say is for that one little crazy, crazy loud moment, um, we're going to need to turn your whole song down. So if you're sitting in your chair, that that trumpet blast or that horn blast doesn't take your head off. So, and, and, I think we've all listened to classical music sometimes where you wish it was a little more limited and compressed because you try to set a volume and then it just gets so quiet that you can't even hear it. So you turn it up and then they blast your head off. That's happened for it to everyone. I'm sure. Exactly. And it's just, it's just for that section. So mastering engineers, mixers, producers, we love dynamics and we love dynamic spiky things that wake us up. But if the dynamic range contrast is too great, your average playback level in, on Spotify is going to be turned down, which is kind of a drag if you get into playlists with other things and all of a sudden your track came on that you worked so hard on and it's turned down just because you have two momentary max moments that are out of control. Does that make sense? What is true peak? True peak is also something uh, that we measure here in metric AB. And true peak means that even though there's not a sample that has clipped a uh, digital headroom as zero, if you run too close to digital zero, you can have an intersample peak modulation an accumulation of analog energy that can actually clip devices. And so if we look at club bangers and we look at the mastering engineers who are making club bangers all over the world, they don't care. They just want it to be loud on a Friday night. That's okay. 
But for the world of Spotify, True Peak actually um, can cause some nasty distortion when you when Spotify receives your music and encodes it into their system. You can end up with clipping that you didn't have on your original master because of the way the encoding um, algorithm looks at living too close to the digital edge of peak. So again, we're moving, we're a little bit ahead, but I wanted to make it kind of an exhaustive, not exhausting, but exhaustive discussion of metric AB. So long story short is when we, when we go in for the Friday night club banger, and if we all were to sit around and analyze club bangers, there'd be true peak overs everywhere. But in the world of Spotify, we take the absolute output margin down of the final limiter one or two dB. So, and we turn on true peak suppression in our mastering software. And then we have beautiful non-clipped masters going to Spotify that still sound loud. To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com.